You've probably seen it by now. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. at 40,000 feet unscrewing a little vial of bright blue liquid. Social media called it out instantly. It's methylene blue, biohackers cheered, cognitive boost, anti-aging, mitochondrial upgrade. But what no one tells you is this. Methylene blue's strongest effects aren't on your mitochondria, they're on your brain chemistry. Specifically, it inhibits monoamine oxidase A, MAOA, the same target as prescription mayos used for depression. Now let that sink in. A compound sold as a supplement has pharmacological potency that rivals antidepressants. Let's unpack what that means. In this video, we'll learn how methylene blue works in the brain. Two, why it's 100 times more potent than a reversible Mayo inhibitor you need a script for. And three, the hidden risks you need to know, especially when using it with other meds. I'm Dr. Sunil Rege, consultant psychiatrist and educator. First, let's start off with biochemistry in plain English. Inside every serotonin producing neuron is a set of enzymes responsible for regulating neurotransmitter levels. Chief among them is monoamine oxidase or Mayo. There are two subtypes, Mayo A, which preferentially degrades serotonin and noradrenaline, and Mayo B, breaks down dopamine and trace amines. Think of these enzymes as molecular shredders. So what happens if you block one of those enzymes? That's the principle behind an entire class of antidepressants known as Mayo inhibitors, MAOIs. Unlike SSRIs, which block serotonin's reuptake into the synaptic cleft, Mayos prevent serotonin breakdown inside the neuron itself. That means you don't just keep more serotonin in the gap between the neurons, you store more inside the neuron ready to release in a stronger amplified burst. It's like stocking up the reservoir before opening the dam. Enter methylene blue. In 2006, researchers Gilman and Ramsey found that even at very low concentrations, we're talking nanomolar levels, methylene blue inhibits Mayo A. This wasn't speculative. It was measurable and pharmacologically confirmed. Two years later, the same team compared methylene blue's potency to moclobamide, a commonly prescribed reversible Mayo inhibitor. Methylene blue was roughly 100 times more potent. Translation, the so-called microdose people use for cognition under one milligram per kilogram already delivers clinically significant Mayo inhibition. Push the dose higher and you start blocking Mayo B as well, meaning dopamine rises right alongside serotonin and noradrenaline. Suddenly the testimonials make sense. Laser sharp focus, endless energy, euphoric calm. Sure, they're feeling it. It's just antidepressant pharmacodynamics in disguise, not magic mitochondrial pixie dust. Let's compare Mayo's versus SSRIs and why the mechanism matters. So SSRIs block the serotonin reuptake pump. This increases the amount of serotonin lingering in the synapse, the space between the neurons. Effects are subtle and gradual. Mayo's stop the neuron from breaking down serotonin internally. When the cell fires again, it has a larger reserve and releases more serotonin in one burst. Effects can be rapid, but harder to control. You're stockpiling serotonin inside the neuron, ready to fire. When it does fire, you get a dramatic surge. Which mechanism seems stronger? The Mayo eye. Which one is easier to tip into toxicity? Same answer. So Mayo's are actually stronger from a mechanistic standpoint, and that's partly why they carry more dietary and drug interaction warnings. You see, methylene blue doesn't behave like an SSRI, it behaves like a pharmacologically potent Mayo inhibitor. And that takes us straight to the elephant in the room, serotonin syndrome. Here's where it gets critical. When Mayo A is inhibited and serotonin levels rise, adding a second serotonergic agent can create dangerous excess. That's the recipe for serotonin syndrome. Symptoms include agitation, tremor, clonus hyperreflexia, fever, dilated pupils, confusion, or even seizures. This can happen when methylene blue is stacked with SSRIs or SNRIs or tramadol, dextromethorphan, a common cough suppressant, St. John's wort, or an antihistamine such as chlorpheniramine. It's not just theory. There have been surgical cases where IV methylene blue was used as a dye and patients died due to undetected interactions with their antidepressants. This risk is especially high because many clinicians don't realize methylene blue is a Mayo inhibitor and many consumers assume it's benign, but a few drops plus a common cold medication and you've created a biochemical powder cake. 
The same pharmacy that sells you blue drops also sells cold and flu tablets loaded with chlorpheniramine. Two meds, one unsuspecting brain, and you're flirting with a trip to the emergency department. Okay, you might say, but what if I take it solo, no other meds? It's still not a free ride. Methylene blue is not inert. Even taken solo, it can produce nausea, dizziness, headaches, tremors, visual disturbances, discoloration of urine and skin, a blue tint. Mechanistically, methylene blue can convert hemoglobin into methhemoglobin, a form that can't carry oxygen efficiently. This creates an apparent cyanosis, blue lips, blue fingers, that can impair oxygen delivery. In severe cases, this can cause shortness of breath, confusion, or fatigue. Now there is a hidden immune and inflammation angle. Mayo isn't merely a neurotransmitter janitor. It's a generator of oxidative stress. So every time the enzyme deaminates a monoamine, it spits out hydrogen peroxide and toxic aldehydes. In many chronic diseases, heart failure, Parkinson's, even neuroinflammatory syndromes, Mayo activities ramped up, fueling tissue damage. So blocking mayo may indeed reduce oxidative stress and inflammation. So there is a grain of truth inside the hype. And this is the grain of truth that drives methylene blue hype. But it's a double-edged sword. Inhibiting mayo can impact not just mood, but also blood pressure, sleep, immune signaling, and more. So yes, there's potential, but that potential needs to be harnessed clinically, not casually. So what should you do? If you're a clinician, always ask about supplements, especially cognitive enhancers or nootropics. Look for interactions with serotonergic agents. Educate patients about serotonin syndrome symptoms. Note, even cough syrups can trigger this off. Be aware that even microdoses of methylene blue are pharmacologically active. If you're a patient or a biohacker, don't combine methylene blue with SSRIs, SNRIs, or cough medicine. Know that Mayo inhibitor effects start at surprisingly low doses. Be cautious with stacking. Recognize that blue urine doesn't mean harmless. This isn't about fear mongering. It's about informed consent. If you're using methylene blue for cognition, mood, inflammation, fine, but treat it with the same level of thoughtfulness you would any antidepressant. So let me summarize all of this for you. Methylene blue is a potent reversible Mayo A inhibitor. It's around 100 times stronger than moclobamide at inhibiting this enzyme. It can produce meaningful changes in serotonin, dopamine, and noradrenaline. But it also interacts dangerously with other serotonergic substances. And it carries its own side effects from mild nausea, discoloration, to severe serotonin syndrome, methhemoglobinemia. So yes, methylene blue is fascinating. It has potential, but it also has power. And we need to respect that. If this breakdown helped clarify things for you, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And remember, in pharmacology, knowledge is the best nootropic. Bye-bye.